This is um, our semi-annual uh, briefing, our May briefing. We will have another briefing in November. And for this briefing, we will go through current IAM events that we know, um, grouper information, shibboleth information, CAS, and midpoint. Um, grouper will be presented by Chad Redman. Shibboleth will be presented by Sean Forth. CAS by Dima Kokolenko and midpoint by Paul Spalli. Okay, our IAM events coming up for 2023. Uh, first event is the In Common Base Camp, which is July 10th to 14th, which is a virtual event. And then Open Aperio from July 13th to 16th in Portland, Oregon. And that is part of the FOSS for Education track at FOSSI. The 2023 Internet 2 Tech Exchange is September 18th to 22nd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And 2023 Educause Conference, October 9th to 12th in Chicago, Illinois. And then it's also online the 18th and 19th of October. And then the IAM Online Monthly Webinar, the, the uh, link is on this page. And so now we'll start with Drupal. So Chad, I'll go ahead and we can start with Drupal. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, so what's new in Grouper? Um, In terms of actual changes lately, um, a lot of the changes, at least in the stable branch, have been incremental improvements to provisioning. Uh, the, the major differences that... that uh, have have been out there lately are a, a really big shift in how they're doing the version numbering. Um, they're looking they're looking for a more strategic um, move to using semantic versioning. And so what so what does that mean? So if you look back, uh, wind back the clock to let's say last December, and so we had two point five, which was the stable branch. Two point six was the new feature branch, uh, the new features mainly being provisioning as we were making incremental improvements to that. Um, the uh, Since December uh, 2.6.19, uh, the version after that, um, they made a big jump to renumber that as grouper version four. Um, so even though that's a big number jump, it's really more of an incremental change. Uh, but that also means that they're changing what what their the stable branch and the feature branch is. So at this point, Grouper version four is considered considered the the stable branch, or the feature complete, or what they're calling the quote no enhancement branch. Um, now that in theory that means no enhancements, they may sneak something in that um, they they feel is not going to to break things. Um, and so version four is, is now that stable branch. So what that means in terms of support, um, their, their policy, according to their wiki, is that once they have a new long-term release or stable branch, the previous stable branch will have uh, six months of support. And so according to the website, um, what that means is that version 2.5 is end of life as of May 1st, 2023. So if you're on 2.5, start to look forward to uh, upgrading to that new version four or version five, which is the, the new feature branch. Um, so from if you're on a later version of 2.6, uh, say 2.6.18 or 19, uh, there's really not major changes that you need to make in order to upgrade to version four. Um, as of Yet, I don't believe there are any database changes, so there are just a few tasks to run for upgrades. Um, what has changed in this new version? Uh, one is that it's upgraded to Java 17. Another is that uh, Tom EE, which was the, um, uh, the, the Tomcat Java uh, J2 Enter Enterprise Edition, has now just moved to Tomcat. Uh, so there may be a few tasks that you need to run if you're referencing the opt grouper Tommy E directory, you might need to change that. Or environment variables referencing Tommy E, you'll need you'll need to change. Um, 
it still retains that new provisioning framework for 2.6. Um, just like 2.6, PSP and G is still there and still working. Um, it's officially marked as deprecated, uh, but it is still working as, a, as of that point. All right, uh, next slide, please. All right, so Grouper, Grouper version five is now the new feature branch where um, experimental and new features are being added. Um, Grouper sometimes has a release early and often mentality. And so um, right now the current version is 5.0.3. Um, it's marked as released, but uh, not recommended for production yet. Uh, and what's, What's new in version five, um, one, of the, one of the things they're adding is what they're calling a data field system. So this is uh, in a way like a, a sort of a data mart that, that exists in Grouper for subject data and attributes to be um, updated through external ETL processes. And that can enhance subject, subject manipulation and in particular, the other new feature that would use that is uh, what, what they're calling Jexel scripted groups. And what this is, is meant for is to be an enhancement for um, constructing access policies based on basis groups. So what you have now in the current production versions of Grouper is that if you have complex policies that are that use group math and you've got intersections and complements, all of that can only work in a pairwise fashion. And if you've got multiple steps of that, it can be a little bit cumbersome. The Jexel scripted groups can enhance that by just having a simple um, approaching a natural language kind of query to um, pull from different subject sources and group sources and subject attributes and construct your access policies in a more natural way. So uh, some, some people have been looking forward to that. And so that's gonna be, uh, I think the major work in version five. Uh, also other work that's, that's expected in version five is removing Apache and Shibboleth from the container so that the only process that will be running in the uh, Docker container will be the uh, to, uh, will be Tomcat. So with the removal of Shibboleth, what that means is that if you need a uh, OIDC authentication provider within your image, the replacement for that is uh, Pack4J authentication. So this, this works as a plugin, a set of jar files included with Grouper. And so this can run within the Tomcat process and not need another um, external daemon to run that. Also, it's expected that PSP and G will be removed at some point in version five. Uh, another change they're working on is uh, database performance improvements. Um, for example, right now, uh, IDs for a lot of the tables are using long 32 character UUIDs and they wanna change that to um, numerical indexes to save on space, uh, which will uh, ideally make make uh, uh, queries run faster. All right, uh, next slide, please. All right, and the grouper roadmap is available on the wiki and uh, describes pretty much what I um, mentioned for the major features that they're, they're looking forward to for version five. Uh, next slide. All right, Unicon is working on a few avenues of sustaining engineering. So the pack 4 j uh, that, that's going to be in version five, um, JJ can fill you in on more details on that. He was the major contributor to um, that work. Um, but that, that will be, um, uh, that's already available. Um, it's, it's uh, the documentation is still in progress, but um, the uh, code is, is out there. Uh, another thing that we're looking at is accessibility updates. This, this this was done for one customer and it's not, uh, we don't know at this point, is, is it gonna be a complete rework of accessibility? Um, but at this point, we've got a few improvements to be made there. All right, and uh, is there any more slides? Is that it? No, that's it. 
Um, we are we do have a couple questions, so we can get those posted. There we go. Okay, looks like we've got everything entered. So we'll go ahead and move on to Shibleth with Sean Port. All right, thank you, Steve. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the state of Shibboleth is very brief at this point. Uh, version 4.3.1 is current. That was primarily just a small bug fix. Uh, the only real new things in 4.3 over 4.2 or 4.1 is the administrative logout option. And that's primarily an interface that you can go in and uh, revoke SSO sessions based on some sort of criteria with uh, attribute lookup being the sort of primary use case for that. Postal has uh, a new sort of audit logging system that's mostly around getting uh, pieces of the authentication flow, username, those kinds of things out and into a log in a format that you want. And the majority of it is a whole slew of depreciation warnings. And that's primarily to, to get everyone ready for 5.0. And then one new thing that they added just a couple of days ago is the OIDC relying party plugin. And uh, that allows the IDP to proxy authentication to an upstream open ID, open ID provider. It functions similar to the, the SAML proxy authentication that's already in there. That's it, next slide, please. The majority of the news is of course IDP five. At this point, maybe the end of 2023, first quarter 24. It's not a lot of news on that. Not much has changed as far as 5.0's proposed features. It's going to be pretty much the same. It's mostly just a, a large underlying uh, restructuring to break the IDP into more shared modules, similar to all the plugins that we already have. And the big thing is uh, getting it running with Java 17 and the Spring Framework 6. So next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, nothing has changed with the Shibboleth SP. Uh, it's pretty much just security patches. And most of those have been for the Windows version because of the included libraries, OpenSSL. Basically, uh, it's waiting on version on IDP 5 because the SP version 4 is most likely going to just be a plugin for the IDP. And so that's really, you know, all depending on when 5.0 comes out. Next slide, please. And we have our Shibboleth IDP UI. This is. Uh, also sort of in a, in a slowdown stage because it's waiting on version five of the IDP, but we do have 1.17.4 as current, primary bug fixes, Pack4j issues. Uh, the work that they did get completed behind the scenes already was getting it up to date with Java 17 and Spring 6, and that's to bring it in line with all the changes that are coming with the IDP version five. And that version is pretty much done and will be released alongside version five. Uh, we have an increasing number of uh, people, institutions that are deploying it or are looking at deploying it. Unicon itself is using it for our own IDP and we're testing it in our cloud IDP environments. And as always, uh, community assistance is available on the internet too in common Slack channel. You can just send an email to them, get added. And uh, I think that's it for IDP UI. Okay. And we do have a couple questions for Shibla. All right. Looks like we have everybody that's answered. If anybody has any, once again, as Sean said, if anybody has any interest in Shibla with IDP UI and, um, and want to know about it, whatever you can, you can get in that Slack channel and, uh, and uh, post a question there and somebody will answer. So um, that's everything for this. Go ahead and end this poll. And then go on to CAS with Dima Kofilenko.
yes, uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, let me run through the uh, latest uh, updates uh, and developments uh, in the PureUcast server. Uh, the uh, current uh, general availability version of CAS server at this time is uh, 667 uh, with uh, full end of life of 66 series is uh, expected uh, to be in September of this year. Um, and uh, as previously uh, stated, uh, the next uh, uh, major uh, version of CAS in development is still a version 7.0. Uh, which is tentatively scheduled uh, at this time to go into a GA release uh, at the end of uh, November of this year. Um, and um, I just want to say that it's pretty much feature complete and uh, the there have been a couple of delays of GA version uh, uh, for version 7 and it's uh, mostly um, dependent on the uh, waiting on the open uh, SAML version 5 to go into a uh, GA mode. Uh, so uh, CAS version 7 could be released with uh, open SAML 5. Um, and um, basically, uh, as usual, it's uh, it's uh, already available for, uh, for a test drive uh, with the uh, release candidate 5 uh, being the most uh, recent uh, beta release at this time. Um, and next slide, please. Um, uh, yeah, and as the last time around, uh, I'll go ahead and continue to review some of the uh, some of the more uh, some more new new features of uh, upcoming version seven. Um, so uh, first item there, um, basically uh, under the hood, the latest uh, release candidates uh, switch to a major uh, Spring Boot feature release which is at version 3.1 at this time. Um, uh, for the next item, uh, this version brings support for uh, Google Cloud logging uh, via Apache Log4j support. So that could be useful if you're uh, deploying your CAS server to uh, Google uh, Cloud uh, provider there. Um, next item, um, the... the uh, Version 7 uh, brings uh, new server operations, which are added uh, to a micrometer, uh, which is the underlying framework for ob observations, uh, basically, and uh, reported metrics. Um, this is useful for um, observability uh, and uh, insight into CAS server internals. Um, those new operations added are uh, ticket registry operations and queries, uh, service management operations and queries, uh, SAML2 service provider metadata resolution, and uh, authentication attempts and uh, transactions. And uh, for the next item, uh, the uh, assertion audiences uh, setting uh, defined for SAML2 service definitions uh, will now uh, be able to overwrite uh, default entity AD when defined in your uh, SAML uh, service definitions. And uh, next slide, please. Um, so uh, for the uh, first item, it's it's kind of a, a new uh, exciting facility. Uh, this uh, new templating service uh, definition facility uh, has been implemented. And um, basically uh, a registered service template definition is the uh, now uh, foundation and uh, initial build, building block uh, to construct uh, your service definitions. And it may act as a pattern for all future service definitions to basically reduce uh, copy paste uh, uh, re uh, duplications and assist with uh, uh, maintenance and sharing of uh, service definitions. Um, uh, next, uh, the uh, Version seven uh, also adds two new ticket registry implementations uh, that are based on uh, Google Cloud's uh, pop sub and also Google Cloud uh, Firestore uh, facilities. So again, could be useful if you're deploying your CAS uh, server to uh, Google Cloud. Um, and next, uh, uh, there have been some deprecations um, and all feature removals uh, in this version. Uh, in particular, um, these uh, deprecated features uh, are now removed uh, from CAS codebase uh, in, in version seven. Um, 
So uh, some of the items removed are uh, uh, custom some components uh, that are used to use to provide uh, or validate uh, SAML2 tokens uh, when CAS is configured to support uh, WS Fed protocol. Uh, these components uh, were uh, only uh, supplied to support Open SAML version 4 APIs and, and uh, were deprecated uh, actually in version 6.6.0 and now in version 7 completely removed. Um, and uh, also next item is the uh, legacy strategy uh, used to generate device uh, uh, record keys uh, for trusted devices in a, a multi-factor authentication flow. Uh, so uh, this strategy was also deprecated in version 6.2 and now uh, completely removed. And last but not least, the uh, uh, required handlers uh, uh, setting uh, for uh, registered services uh, uh, being removed in, in this version. So this setting was deprecated in version 6.2 and now completely removed. Um, and as usual, uh, uh, this release uh, brings uh, improvements and more test coverage uh, for uh, unit and functional tests uh, for uh, CAS software itself. Um, so, it's uh, uh, being more uh, rock solid. Uh, and, uh, and now the functional test suite uh, includes um, approximately 300, uh, 397 uh, um, tests. Um, uh, so, uh, and uh, again, for a more comprehensive list of features uh, uh, for all future releases, uh, you could, uh, uh, visit the uh, link uh, on the slide there. So it's a more comprehensive uh, release notes. And uh, next slide, please. And um, uh, as for a sustaining engineering effort uh, for CAS server, uh, as usual, uh, the team continues to put uh, significant uh, development and uh, stabilization effort uh, for version seven, uh, as well as uh, bug fixes of uh, version uh, currently supported version 6.6 .6 of the CAS server. Um, and with that, uh, that's my brief update on the CAS server and thank you for your attention. All right, and we also have a couple questions for CAS. All right, so it like, looks like we've got everything in. We'll go ahead and close this poll and then go to midpoint with Paul Spouty. All right, hello everyone. So Midpoint, um, the IDM part of the Internet to Trusted Access platform um, has released a, a, a new version uh, since we last talked. Um, and actually a few versions in a way, but, but mainly one newest one. And then uh, there is an LTS on state on, on, on schedule for the end of this year. Um, so the current LTS is the one we talked about last time, which is 444 um, or a 404. And um, the latest feature release is 4.7. Um, all other versions are unsupported by Evolvium, but if you're on open source support, Unicon will support you on the older versions. Uh, next slide. So 4.4 uh, four, uh, brought basically uh, mid-scale, mid-privacy improvements, um, performance improvements, UI updates, uh, threading, clustering, all the sorts of things, bug fixes. I, and we talked about those last time. Um, but just know that if you're not on it yet, uh, you want to be traveling towards the 4.4 the and later releases. Next next slide. Um, again, they've removed some stuff. We know more now. There's a couple of vulnerabilities that you all know and love out there uh, with Log4j. That didn't really affect Midpoint um, and some other things. But um, be, because of some of those, uh, they don't recommend deploying the, the war to the Tomcat any longer, nor that they want to support that. Windows Server is no longer supported. Um, you could run it. If there's nothing wrong, stopping you from running Midpoint on Mac or Windows or anything like that, especially for development, but people don't recommend it. Um, multiple database support has not been removed yet in something like even 4.7, uh, but they keep talking about that it will be removed. And so we'll see here. And then next, if it will be removed, or, or, or as they've been saying, or the hinting at. Um, so just be prepared that if you're on a different database, I need to be looking at Postgres. Uh, next slide. 
So new connectors have come out, um, and, and it's kind of important because they don't they aren't updated very often. So the LDAP's gone through a few now. Um, you can get uh, three five on the four 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 release. Uh, I talked about that last time, but now it comes it comes bundled, and there is there's even a few more updates, especially as you go on to four seven. Uh, so you want to take advantage of that it's primarily better error handling, especially for Active Directory. Um, database table connector and CSV, connect, CSV connector have been updated. Data, database table connector, uh, it eliminates some errors that you might have been getting, uh, common errors, um, so better support for, for UID types and, and things like that. But there's, um, it's still, still both of those are, are, um, are updated. And um, they always talked about depre deprecating the Java connector server, but it's still around. It's a very interesting case. It um, comes out of more of the corporate world. But uh, that is the, the Java connector is a remote connector. So you can run connectors remotely on a target system uh, if midpoint doesn't have access. And then it, 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 it connects midpoint um, to, it connects to midpoint. Um, it provides like a, 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 a way to do that over a binary stream. Anyways, long story short, that proven still useful. So they're maintaining that as well. Uh, next slide. So four six, we talked about a little about little bit about last time. Um, again, they they have smart correlation identity matching uh, for with with using the I, in common ID match service. So that's a separate service you would deploy. Um, there's a smart correlation which is built into Midpoint, which is a weighted system, um, and it gives you a much easier way to do correlation versus um, versus the the previous way of doing it which is a lot of and and ors in your synchronization. Uh, synchronization is much more streamlined now in newer versions. You, you just put it as an attribute on the attributes that you're going to synchronize um, versus that whole clause that you had in the older resources. So one of the newer features of the newer midpoints is that that synchronization is much better and deduplication is there now in many forms. Um, OIDC support and flexible authentication um, so you can do, you can connect demo to IDC to SSO. Um, and lots of UI improvements and, and so on and so forth. Uh, next slide. And the latest release is 4.7. So the biggest feature out of 4.7, if you want to take away, the one that they're going to promote is simulations. So already we have a way of doing a preview on the user to see what happens to them when you make a change. Um, for Past there was dry runs, but that was very, I don't know, cumbersome, I guess is the best word. And the dry run really didn't give you a whole lot of information. Simulations give you a high level, really detailed in the UI information about what a change might do and where and what, and without doing it. So it basically simulates making the change across all things. And, and you can know the notifications of making a change are and play out different scenarios. So that's uh, it's a really cool feature. I uh, will give you uh, a lot of things. They, uh, UQ Austin, um, uh, out there in the internet to um, community, you might see them at working groups. Uh, they they actually uh, uh, funded a password reset functionality. So it's extended password reset functionality. You could have multiple different password um, policies and it'll attach based on organizations and rules and things like that and the hierarchy. Um, so that uh, proper password policy can be applied. And uh, updates to the GUI, a, a lot of updates to the GUI and updates so that you can change the GUI for different users and, and views that you need in your system. And then uh, a lot of additions for IGA enhancements. Um, there are, um, there, there, there's a whole level of IGA enhancements. I won't get into it here, but uh, on the rules themselves, you can, you can, there's a lot of things that you can do Kind of finishes off some of the IGA features that they were planning. Uh, they're actually planning, I think, more in the future. But um, so if you're using roles and governance, and you're maybe you're not using something like Drupal, um, all of that that midpoint is now extended. Um, and then they do have a, a few different queries. Um, so there's there used to be the query playground. Well, there still is the query playground. Uh, it's been enhanced. And then there's the mapping playground now, which is you can actually test queries. Now you can test mappings and see it. In, in, so you don't have to pull out like a groovy editor and go test a mapping. You can actually test it inside the UI 
Uh, there's a place for it. And then there's the reference queries. Um, it, they're just adding more features to help you administrate Midpoint in the UI. Um, next uh, slide. Um, removals and uh, depre deprecations. You go back one, I think we skipped one. Uh, oh, I guess you went too far. Okay, so it's the next one, my bad. Uh, connector updates are, again, like I said, the LDAP and CSP keep, uh, keep being updated. Um, so you wanna stay on top of that. Uh, they did an ICF framework update, which was really helpful for a lot of things. Um, so as long as you're on 4.4, but really as you go towards later versions, uh, you're gonna get a lot of performance improvements. And then they keep enhancing LDAP for trouble for um, troubleshooting and uh, and error resiliency. Um, next slide. And then removals and deprecations. There, there's a lot of this minor internal object updates. A lot of them I don't think are going to apply to people unless you've extended the code quite heavily and are are using um, some of the internal Java or the XML classes. Um, the biggest thing is system configuration and security policy. Well, both have changed, especially security policy for the new, like OIDC stuff. There's uh, the extended password reset. So some things have changed there. Um, you can always pull out the reference version in the disk folder or the, in, in the in the image, there's a folder. And if you go in, uh, it has the objects, or you can just go to the volumes get and get the, the, the um, updated objects and then migrate your changes to it. Um, but that, I mean, that's like any upgrade, it, it doesn't seem terrible. Um, that's largely all you have to be aware of. There wasn't a ton of removals in 4.7. We'll see what 4.8 comes out with. Um, and that should be out hopefully by the end of the year. The next slide. All right, so we have a question. Steve will post that. So what what is your interest in Bitpoint? And then we're just, you know, trying to gauge interests out there. Are you using it? Are you planning on using it? Um, and and so on and so forth. And we do have a question. Do you know of a lot of users integrating Midpoint with Cooper? Yes, primarily everyone in higher education that we consult with typically integrates, uses Midpoint and Grouper. Um, and in, in, in most cases, I think majority use the whole ITAP stack. So that is, um, and in, in, in the whole, I mean, in most of the parts outside of co-manage. So triple IDP, grouper and midpoint. Um, and uh, that, that's what we see. Uh, so what does grouper give you with midpoint? So grouper really adds in, uh, while midpoint theoretically can do a lot of what grouper can do, um, midpoint point you service it very well let's put it that way and so grouper gives you a ui to group to do group things if, which is really well tailored for higher education and the vast variety of amount of groups and um and whatever attribute based access control role based access control that you subscribe to and you use or mix um it allows you to do a lot of that and we can pipe that information back into grouper or into midpoint um, and use that for provisioning decisions. So it becomes a very powerful tool, uh, finely tailored for higher education. Uh, but that doesn't mean you have to use Grouper. Uh, and you can use Grouper with many different things too, outside of Midpoint. So if you're not using Midpoint, please consider Grouper. Uh, you can use it with Octa, you can use it with other things. If you're using Midpoint, you don't have to use Grouper. And we have consulted with a few, they're generally small, smaller, uh, colleges or schools, community colleges that just don't have the need for the complexity of groupers. That, and, and in my case, I would say that they do want to play grouper, they just haven't yet. Um, and they've started off with midpoint doing the IG or the governance aspects. Um, and that has worked well for them. Um, it, but again, most of them use midpoint and group. Right. Thanks, Paul. Um, that is everything for our presentation today. Um, we do have some time for question for a question and answer session. If you have anything that you'd like to like to submit, go ahead and submit it in the Q and A area, and we will go ahead and uh, hopefully be able to provide answers. 
Oh, here's one that just came up. So how does midpoint grouper and calves all work together? Who wants to take that one? Okay, JJ. <clears throat> hey, yes, I, I can take this question. So as mentioned previously, Paul, Paul and his description, each of those applications actually plays a different role out there in, in the identity stack. Typically, we'll use Midpoint for the base identity management and some governance functionality. We'll use group grouper out there to manage, as the name implies, groups, but also access policies. And CAS is a web single sign-on application. So we're looking at your authentication and authorization. So how those all work together, typically the workflow looks like so, you get a user out there or you get, let's say, a new student. Midpoint gets that information from, let's say, your SIS system. Get some basic information out there, your identity for that student. So when that student enrolls in courses, Grouper could go out there and say, hey, this student is enrolled in chemistry 10101. It will build out a policy, say, if you're in a chemistry 101 course, you have access to a particular lab, or you might have access to a particular application out there. We'll pick Canvas. So Grouper would take that information about the user, build out the access policy, and then provision it out to wherever might collect or receive that information. That could be an LDAP server. That could be an application like Canvas. It could be Midpoint. Once that information is provisioned, out, that student should then have access to those resources. So if they have access to a lab, that information may have been provisioned out to something like CS Gold for door access. And when that student goes up and swipes their card, they can get into a lab. If that student, based upon that enrollment in Chemistry 101, has access to Canvas, what could happen is if that information is provisioned out to LDAP, CAS can pick up that information as either an attribute that would be provisioned just in time, or it could just pick up a group that that user or that student is in. When CAS goes out and asserts either through the CAS protocol or through the SAML protocol, that information would be available to that relying party out there, in this case, Canvas. Canvas could either take that attribute, that policy directly, saying, hey, this student has access to Canvas, and in particular, this course, or Canvas could pick up set and say, oh, the student is in Chemistry 101. Based upon my internal configuration, the student should have access to this course. So that's, that's a simple example out there on how those three applications can work together. Now, note, I do say that that is a pretty simple example. You could get pretty complex there with your implementations. So something like that, that may be for you if you're interested, opening up a ticket in Zendesk and we could probably talk to you about that. Do we have any other questions out there? We do have a few minutes left. 
Okay. If that, if there are no more questions, I want to thank everybody for attending. And um, we will also be putting this recording out on our YouTube site, and we will announce when that is out there. So everybody have a good rest of your day. And once again, thanks for attending. Yes, thanks everyone.